Welcome back, everyone. Uh, think about the things we take for granted. You hungry? Go to the refrigerator. Got a little extra money, you go out for dinner. Well, suppose neither one of those options were available to you. What would it be like? What would it be like if you had to make a decision between whether you eat or your child eats? Now, not to be overly dramatic here, that is so much more prevalent in our own community than you would even realize. And we got wind of event through a good friend of ours, Joanne Yepsen, about an organization called the Hunger Action Network in New York in an event that they're holding here in Saratoga, which is an educational um, event as well as an event open to the public. And joining me today are two people very much involved in this. I'd like to introduce uh, Leanne Mandrillo, who's the executive director of the Hunger Action Network in New York. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. And I don't have to say nice to meet you because we already know each other. <laughs> and this is Bo Golieber, who is head of philanthropy. Oh, philanthropy. <laughs> this is, that's an important word, by the way, for yeah. uh, finger paint. And yes, the finger paint in Saratoga that many of us know about because of the gen generosity of Ed Mitson and everybody at finger paint. Um, I want to get into this a little bit about hunger. I set this up. You heard what I said. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't just people who are wandering around on the streets. These are people who are making the, the decision at about four o'clock every day, what's it going to be like for dinner? Right. Correct? That's right. Tell us about this. Well, I think that the prevalence of hunger, as you opened with, is far more pervasive than anybody knows. And I think that people hide it very well. It's a, oh, a highly kept point. secret. Um, to many people, unfortunately, it's a dirty secret, but it's a reality. And, you know, most people, which the recent government shutdown just showed us, are one paycheck away from crisis with hunger. And, and in this community and in communities all across New York, hunger has taken hold of families and more than just not being able to figure out what they're going to eat for dinner, but not having anything to eat for breakfast either, mm -hmm. and their child not being part of any of the federal nutrition programs offered at school, so not knowing what to pack that lunch in. And then that has all these other things that happen. Then um, behavioral issues arise with the children. Do you know what I want to get into in, those, in, in a little bit more detail? Mm -hmm. um, you said something to me uh, before we yeah. started the interview about social and food That's injustice. Right. That's right. Those are terms you don't actually hear said together very often. They, if you think about social injustice separately and you think about food injustice, okay, you may be able to try to define that, but just think about how they, the right. interaction of, of the two of those. Um, I mentioned to you we had done some work with Captain in Clifton Park. Yep. And we interviewed a, a mother who sat in a parking lot for a half hour because she didn't have the courage to go in and ask for food yet she was making the decision whether or not she would have something to eat or her baby that was six months old have something to eat. You know, that's jaw-dropping information. Mm -hmm. And this is something that the Hunger Network sees all the time, right? Yeah, we absolutely do. And you had said that the two terms were synonymous, but social injustice, food injustice is an exact symptom of that greater social injustice yes, that comes right. from it, right? So a lot of people who are struggling with hunger and having to make horrible decisions like this woman you just shared with us on feeding herself or her children. They are people working two, three jobs sometimes, but they're not earning a living wage. Um, they are people who have minimal to no medical coverage and one dental thing has put them completely uh, in a bankrupt almost scenario. Mm -hmm. um, these are also people too who lack decent transportation to be able to get to work so their hours get cut so they bring in less money they can't afford child care because child care is very expensive so anything they earn goes to pay child care and there's nothing left for food mm -hmm. so all of those systemic social injustice there's wage theft there's people who who are not getting tipped appropriately um, there are all sorts of scenarios that are going on that is causing people to have inequities and, and, and inequalities happen to them through no fault of their own, through systemic injustices. And food justice is a huge byproduct of that, that comes from that. You know, I want to drill down a couple of things you said. Um, the destructive way that these 
things that she was talking about work off of each other. You get uh, laid off. Good government shutdown is probably right. a good example. But any number of different things. Your hours are cut. Your car breaks down. You can't get to work, so your hours are cut. It's just you, you just realize that people can get hit any number of different ways at any number of different levels, and the result is the same. It's hunger. Yep. Something in this country we just don't seem to be able to wrap our arms around. Um, you know, at Finger Paint Bow, um, I made mention of Ed up front, you know, Ed and Lisa and, and everybody at Finger Paint, just so generous in the community and involved in so many things. What got you interested in this? This conversation uh, excited me from the very beginning. Actually, Joanne came to me, as you mentioned, Joanne Yepsen. Um, she had been working as an advocate for the Hunger Action Network and said, you know, I'd really like to figure out how we can help connect them with so many of these organizations that they're serving on the front lines. And so um, I took it as an opportunity to kind of be a facilitator for this important mm -hmm. conversation and get all of these people on the front lines of hunger in the capital region on all different levels mm -hmm. around the table to have a conversation about the common trends that we're seeing. Um, so often these folks are doing amazing things with their programs, but they're not getting a chance to engage with each other enough to yeah. talk about mm -hmm. some of the common themes that they might be facing. So I thought let's, in addition to having this reception and bringing the community into it on the public level, Let's do something um, really exciting to bring these people around the table to have that first conversation to hopefully find some solutions and collaboration moving forward and using the Hunger Action Network as sort of the, the spearheader of the opportunity to get everybody together and, and find those solutions. So wow. I'm excited. Well, wow. yeah. well said. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, really. I'm really honored to have that many people doing the great work that you know our community needs so much in the same room together. Mm -hmm. so it's really great. And you know, I want to um, embellish one point that you would think, okay, so you're hungry. It, this affects your mental health. Mm -hmm. It could be a physical problem. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that you may not necessarily understand is that it contributes to obesity. Yep, it does. Because if you're in a food desert or something and you just can't get food or whatever, you take a, a less expensive alternative and all, that nutritionally is a problem. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, if you're, if you're a child, you can't perform well in school. Nope. If you're an adult, you can't perform well at work, and then you start to suffer some of those physical, emotional consequences. Absolutely. And you I know, bet you see this, right? I've seen it the entirety of my career. That's what got me into hunger. I'm a public health nutritionist, and right. so you would see the real impacts that hunger was happening and lack of just adequate nutrition. I mean, I can recall talking to a parent that was very honest and told me, I can afford a three-liter orange soda, I could never afford a half a gallon of orange juice. You know what I mean? And, and things like that. So, and as you had alluded to with mental health and physical health, it's the same thing with the systemic. They build on each other. That's right. You know, right. and then so now you've got this situation that it's almost impossible to get out from under. Mm -hmm. And so when you have all those constructs coming together like that, there really is almost the feeling that there's nothing that's going to help me escape from the situation. Mm -hmm. And the reality is there is, you know, it take, it's going to take a lot of political will and a lot of people working together as, you know, Bo had said, but I think the best thing that can come of the work is meeting the long-term and short-term needs, right? So the short-term needs is to feed the hungry and give them food, right? So they can go to work, so their child can go to school, to educate them on, on federal nutrition programs and things that can help them that they may be qualified for, that they don't realize that they can get. But then to also address the long-term needs, the things that are happening that systemically keep them hungry. Right. And in doing that, you also give hope, which is a very important factor for someone who is hungry. That well, that's this... why the community really needs to show their support, mm -hmm. because that's the crutch almost in a way to provide hope, right? right. Um, in putting this event together, uh, there's a portion of it that's open to the public Correct. and also a portion that's kind of a workshop to address so many of the things that Leanne's talking about, right? Exactly. Uh, the event is Monday, April 8th, at, right here at 1 Franklin Square. Yes. Oh, not Franklin Center. 1 <laughs> Franklin Square, right here in Saratoga, in arguably one of the most beautiful buildings, which Finger Paint, by the way, has now taken over and created this absolutely amazing space to do, like, this community event, right? Exactly. 
it's an awesome opportunity to utilize um, the connections and the community contacts that we have that we're so passionate about mm -hmm. and bring everybody together in the same room towards something that really mattered. Okay, this is something that you really uh, do, have to do. You know, again, I, I just want to cycle back on something at, at the beginning. We don't think about hunger in America, yet if you only go just one layer underneath the lives that all of us live, you would be stunned at the depth and scope of what we're talking about here. So this right. is a way, a way to help in something that's an immediate need that affects children, that affects adults, and their ability to be members of our community. Um, April 8th, right here at 1 Franklin Square. What's the time, Bo? It's going to start at 5.30, the reception. Okay. Um, also honoring two champions within the community. Oh, well. thank you for mentioning that. You're I totally welcome. forgot about no, that's that. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's Ron Deutsch and Sully. Yes, two people right. that I think anybody right. who's on the, um, on the track to wanting to make a difference in hunger know those names, um, both active community um, advocates for hunger, and we're really excited to celebrate them that night as well. I mean, both Ron and Sully, if anybody lives in this community, you realize how generous these people are too. Uh, thank you for remembering that. I'd be <laughs> punching are. myself in the head <laughs> later for not remembering it, really. Uh, what's the website? Oh, so people can get their tickets. They can go to our website at Hunger Action New York Network of New York State. So www.hungerActionNetworkNewYorkState.org. I'm sorry I said that fast. Oh, no, that's okay. We'll put it on the screen, too. That's Thank great. You. And okay. there will be an event. They'll, they'll see the event when they go to the website. And they can okay. just click, and it will take them everywhere they need to go to register. Good. And we want to let people know, too, that if they can't make it to the event that day, that they all of their donations go right to the Hunger Action Network, which will then trickle down to all of the community partners in New York. Right. So. It's great. Right. Yeah. What a pleasure to meet you. Great to see you both. Thank you. Thank, so you. Thank you for the Thank time. Thank you so much. Yeah, what a wonderful organization and event. Thank really. you. All right. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, go to the website, looktvonline.com.